Hello there, my name is Richard Arundel and thank you very much for watching this video. Today's lecture is going to be introducing the concept of on-orbit manufacture. So in this video we're going to ask the question what is on-orbit manufacture and I'm going to go through a little bit of what that actually is. We're then going to have a look at what humanity could achieve if we actually had this capability and what are the sort of products and ideas that we could come up with. I'm then going to go over a very basic top level process of what on orbit manufacture might include. And then we're going to elaborate on that by going through an example mission and product walkthrough. And then once we've done that, we'll summarize and recap to finish up the video. So, the big question that we can see here is, what is on-orbit manufacture? Well, if I had to put it in one sentence, in my mind, I see it as spacecraft, building spacecraft in space. Essentially, the aim of on-orbit manufacture, or OOM, as I'll call it as an abbreviation, is essentially we want to be able to manufacture structural components. And ideally, if we can build simple components that can build up a larger structure and assembly, then we could build, well, almost anything really. And so essentially the current focus of what I'm working on with my research is the capability to manufacture a strut, which is a basic structural element. So if we can create these structural components and build them into a larger assembly, all sorts of geometry and capability is there. And if we combine it with on-orbit servicing, which is paired with on-orbit manufacture, whereas on-orbit manufacture is about creating something new from raw materials, on-orbit servicing would be carrying out functions such as repairing, salvaging, upgrades, refueling, and other resupply tasks. And there's quite a bit of on-orbit servicing already that we have. For example, with the International Space Station, other modules, for example, with recent success with Dragon X. So now that we've considered what capabilities of on-orbit manufacture exist, now let's have a look at the actual top level process itself. For the research that I'm conducting, I've divided it into different areas of primary capability and component, then looking at a second component, the material to consider, and then a potential tooling or system concept that would be required to put it all together. The three primary capabilities I see in on-orbit manufacture are your small parts and tools, the maintenance and upgrade of components, and then the structures uh, manufacture, which is more where I'm looking at it. With the small parts and tools, for example, you can consider the metallic powders and filaments like they do with 3D printing in space at the moment on the International Space Station. So it's very handy if, for example, you're in mid-mission and obviously there are astronauts in space and they need, say, simple things like a new spanner or maybe nuts and bolts or small components like that. Having 3D printing capability and to manufacture these small parts as required and have a, a basic store of material that can be used to manufacture is very useful because then you can make parts you know, as and when you need it. The next capability would be the maintenance and upgrade of components. So, for example, this would be larger than nuts and bolts and spanners. It could actually be like um, an interface or perhaps a small panel. It's like, you know, a, a replacement uh, piece of pipe work. And again, this would be application dependent, but I see it as components that are larger than your nuts and bolts and fastener type objects and tools up to actual sort of parts, pipe work and so forth. The next stage, which I consider is structural manufacture capability, as in what can we do beyond launch? With this, I see it is essentially you've got your structural elements and you've got your struts, your beams and rods, and your panels and shells and membranes. And essentially, if you combine them on some level to create a larger assembly, you could create anything from a truss assembly, you could create, say, membrane type shells, as in, say, a fuel tank, or even like hull repairs, let's say, on a spacecraft. So with, with these secondary components, we could build up a variety of different assemblies. And so materials that we're looking at, 
you've got your plastics, your different composites, and your metallic structures. And each material re requires potentially different tooling or system concepts. So now that we have an idea of what on-orbit manufacture is on a very top level, what could we actually achieve if we were to have this capability? So a few examples here, and it's not exhaustive, but just to demonstrate the point. We could look at building infrastructure for colonizing other worlds and for gathering resources. So that will include aspects such as asteroid mining or other facilities like that. And here is an example from Deep Space Industries of mining an asteroid. Another consideration is that of improving support capability or providing a support function for other spacecraft and clients. In this example shown on the screen, we could see that a large antenna reflector that would be much bigger than a conventional payload envelope if it was launched from Earth would be an ideal product to manufacture in space to support communication satellites. For interstellar exploration, having the ability to manufacture products during the crew stage far away from Earth and potentially with no resources available would be hugely beneficial. Some examples of this could include expanding habitation modules. If it was looking at interstellar travel that would take generations of human lifetimes, then potentially you could be looking at families who would obviously reproduce and populations would grow, and so therefore you would require more room to move around with, and so being able to manufacture additional living space would be optimal. Another concept for on-orbit manufacture involving interstellar travel would be that from the Initiative for Interstellar Studies, which have looked at using a laser sail propelled spacecraft. And the idea behind this is that lasers would fire at the sail and the photons would provide the thrust to accelerate the spacecraft to a fast enough speed so that they could actually achieve the destination in mind, which is Alpha Centauri, within a hundred years or so. Now, as the spacecraft gets further away, the target sail gets smaller. So if you could therefore manufacture the sail and it would grow as the cruise phase was progressing, then you essentially make the target bigger so that the laser propulsion still has a reasonable target to aim at. The top level on orbit manufacture process then. On this slide, we can see that from left to right, there's a deployment and retrieval of materials that moves then into preparing the material and forming it into the desired geometry. We then want to assemble and secure the geometry into whatever permanent shape we intend it to be. It will then undergo some quality checks and some sort of validation to make sure that what we've built is good. And then assuming that all goes well, we will then deploy and dispense the product out the other end of the process. Now, In this example, we're going to say that the material is spooled. So if you like, imagine sellotape on a reel. And through this process, the sellotape has been pulled out as you would, and then essentially cut to length at the end. And in between that, it's been formed in the shape that we want, so in this case, a tube to form a strut. From the spool, the material is then formed into this tube-like structure. And as we can see on the diagram, we have these horizontal rollers and vertical rollers. So different stages help to achieve the shape that we're looking for. You can also see that there are heating coils depicted in the diagram. These are there for two reasons in this example. Firstly, to heat up the material so that it's easier to shape or make it more malleable. And secondly, in this example, we're using a laser welding system to secure the geometry once we've formed the shape. So by preheating the metal, we are actually preparing it and making it easier for the laser welding process to carry out the laser welding task. The laser welder in this system and example then, its function is to carry out a seam weld of the, sh the material that we folded over into a tube. So if you can imagine that you have in your hand a piece of paper and you roll up into a cylinder, you'll get an overlap where the, the two ends join. 
And so what's happened in this system is that it's been rolled and you have that overlap and it's held into position by a combination of the vertical and horizontal rollers and the heating coils as well to maintain that shape. And then the laser welder would essentially run up and down the seam up a certain length of that, of that length of the piece of work carry out its laser weld and that will secure the geometry before moving on to the quality checks. A validation and quality check-in system would ensure that the work that has been conducted is to the required standard of what we're looking for as part of the manufacture process and essentially there are two options that come out of this. The workpiece either passes or it fails. If a workpiece were to fail its quality check, then there would need to be a system that would allow for reworking or scrapping or recycling, essentially. But on a positive spin, let's assume that the quality check all passes, then the next stage is basically to deploy or dispense the product at the end. And so what we have on the right hand side of the diagram here is that we have this tube that is now extruded through the system and ideally it would be manufactured to a desired length and then it would be detached or cut at some point when that desired length is reached and after that it would then be retrieved by either a smaller spacecraft subsystem let's say for example a robotic arm and it would store it until collected later or perhaps a smaller spacecraft as part of an on-orbit servicing constellation of spacecraft might be assembling a product in situ so either way the product once it's been manufactured and tested it has to be deployed and dispensed in a safe manner once the product has been made and we've got it stored or it's ready to use or whatever the end result is of the manufacture how does it fit in with a potential on-orbit manufacture mission and business model. So working with the diagram that we can see on the screen now, we have a customer orbit and a potential graveyard slash manufacture orbit. Now, a graveyard orbit is essentially where spacecraft, once they've reached the end of their life, they are typically they typically use the last of their fuel to move into a different orbit where they then power down and it's essentially considered a more safer orbit in the event of any collisions or risk management. In this mission concept then, the graveyard orbit is considered for the manufacture orbit in the event that something goes wrong with the process, like a collision for example, in which case more debris is created and that is not something that you would want in a functioning orbit for example with geostationary satellites that work with communications and so forth. So let's imagine then that a client spacecraft is sent into orbit and it's a communication satellite and it requires an antenna reflector to be built and the antenna reflector that it requires it's much bigger than a payload envelope provided by a conventional launch vehicle. So our manufacturing facility then creates many of these small struts that we used previously as an example and assembles them into a much larger construct, i.e. the antenna reflector, and with some other work, perhaps with a shell or membrane to help fill out the rest of the reflector dish, we now have an end product. Our manufactured product then has to meet with the client spacecraft and install the reflector dish. So here we could see there's a tug with a little blue arrow leaving the manufacture orbit and go into the customer orbit and with it it will have our reflector in tow. The tug would then carry out on-orbit servicing functions to install the reflector onto the client spacecraft and again once quality checks have been conducted and so forth ideally the system will be up and running and the tug can then return back to the manufacture orbit and the main facility and wait for the next product to be manufactured so that it can deliver to the next client spacecraft. 
essentially this could repeat until such a time that a resupply mission is required that we can see in the dotted black line up there and that would be to refuel the manufacture facility for raw materials fuel and perhaps any replacement tugs if they were you know damaged or becoming out of service through lots of use so let's go through how an example product may be built. So we've covered the manufacturing process, how to get material and turn it into something. And we have looked at a potential mission concept to get a finished product from a manufacturing facility to a customer spacecraft. Continuing the theme of this antenna reflector frame then that we're looking to manufacture. So let's imagine then that we have to have a base from where to start. With the reflector frame. So a base module could be provided either by the client or it could be part of the on-orbit manufacture facility already if that was its product line and would continue to make multiple versions of it. So a base module would essentially contain all the important systems that would be needed to interface with the client spacecraft, but the outer shell of it would provide a structural hard point for the manufacturing facility to start assembling the struts around it. This is a very basic idea of how the frame might actually start to build around the hard point uh, gradually and as we could see with the e example process that we went through from the material and creating these true tubes okay or a strut we can see that in the first diagram here in the top left we've essentially got a, a few struts that we've assembled to make a triangle now with a few more struts we start building upon this so moving from top left to top right you could see that this framework is now starting to build up Repeating this process enough times, we can eventually achieve the final product and assembly that we're looking for. The product design and assembly design that we're eventually looking for with on-orbit manufacture would have to undergo its own design process and certainly for the structural limitations, because although we're in the space environment, there are a number of problems that we need to consider and they need to be designed in accordance with good engineering practice. Now that's beyond the scope of this video, but certainly in a future lecture that will be covered and discussed in more detail. To summarize this introductory on-orbit manufacture lecture then, these are the different areas of consideration as part of the technology roadmap on a top level. The overall concept of what an on-orbit manufacturing mission might look like has been shown, and with that we've covered a potential manufacturing method. It's also been shown that material handling and validation and the quality of the product is also an important factor of the on-orbit manufacture process so that we can move the material from its storage through the system safely and formed into the desired product. And it must be done with good engineering practice in mind and ensuring that the product will perform as intended. The next step is to then combine these three key areas to create a laboratory prototype and essentially demonstrate it in a laboratory setting to ensure that everything works together and do the best we can to recreate the space environment. The eventual goal is to then create a candidate payload for an on-orbit demonstrator flight and that is to actually build a small scale spacecraft that can achieve the manufacturing method that we choose handle the material correctly and validate a potential product. The demonstration product that's in mind is the strut, the basic building block that we've discussed in this lecture. So if we can prove that we can manufacture a strut in space, then there is potential that with further automation and a larger facility that this process could be repeated over and over and assemble something much larger and this could pave the way for true on-orbit manufacturing capability in the future. As a recap, in this lecture, we've talked about what on-orbit manufacture is. We've looked at what humanity could actually achieve with on-orbit manufacture. We then looked at the top level process that we would need to actually achieve this. We've also gone through a potential mission concept and used an antenna reflector as an example product. And then we've looked at the top level roadmap 
of how we might eventually get to an in-flight demonstration. That concludes today's lecture and the introduction of on-orbit manufacture. Now there's loads of different areas that are open to cover and I look forward to making videos in the future so that we can explore each of these different concepts and areas and as the research progresses I hope you'll come along for the journey and follow the videos as they come out. If you enjoyed this video please take a moment to click the subscribe and the bell button down below and that way you can keep up with new videos as they're released. If you'd like to support Arundel Astronautics even further than this, then that would definitely be appreciated. And by all means, please click on the website link below and find out how you can get involved with this further support. Thank you and have a great day.